A good and righteous proxy war wouldn't need such cartoonish PR. Star Wars megastar Mark Hamill was recently named an ambassador for United24, the fundraising platform of the Ukrainian government, where according to the Times, his attention will center on the procurement, repair, and replacement of drones as well as pilot training. From the Times, quote, In this long and unequal fight, Ukraine needs continuous additional support. That's why I was honored President Zelensky asked me to become an ambassador for the Army of Drones, Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, said in a statement. I know for certain that Ukrainians need drones to protect their land, their freedom, and their values of the entire democratic world. Right now is the best time for everyone to come together and help Ukraine stand up in this war with the evil empire. In a statement thanking Hamill for his support, Zelensky said, The light will win over darkness. I believe in this. Our people believe in this. Thank you for taking on this difficult mission of being the first ambassador to help Ukraine raise funds for the army of drones to support our defenders. It is really important. Hamill, 71, is among an expanding list of celebrities who have lent their support to United24, which Zelensky launched in May. The website is reported to have raised nearly $188 million in donations, including a recent $5 million contribution from the Pfizer Foundation to support Ukraine's medical needs. Last week, Barbara Streisand announced that she would also serve as an ambassador, hailing the capability and courage of the Ukrainian people as an inspiration for all those worldwide who promote democracy and fight authoritarianism, end quote. So for the record, if you were under the impression that this proxy war could not possibly get any more Disney-fied, you were wrong. Hamill celebrated his new position by tweeting a graphic showing a Star Wars spaceship wearing the Ukrainian flag colors, which the actor captioned in Polish because Hollywood is brain poison. Other recent Twitter PR shenanigans for this proxy war include the Ukrainian government account talking to its Crimea account in the cringiest imitation of viral brand tweets you could possibly come up with. Hey, at Crimea, what's new? tweeted the Ukraine account in lowercase letters, just like the cool kids do. At Ukraine, getting unchained on my way home, the Ukrainian government's Crimea account replied. Both of these accounts would of course be run by the same person, who would have been hired specifically for their understanding of social media, internet memes, and marketing, because this is the most phony, PR-intensive proxy war of all time. The face of this war is, after all, Volodymyr Zelensky, a well-known Ukrainian actor, who has been drumming up Western support for this war by modeling on Vogue, making video appearances for the Grammy Awards, the Cannes Film Festival, the Venice Film Festival, the New York Stock Exchange, the World Economic Forum, and probably the Bilderberg Group as well, and having meetings with celebrities like Ben Stiller, Sean Penn, and Bono in The Edge from U2. Since this war began, the Western media have been blanketing the airwaves with astonishingly biased coverage like nothing we've ever seen before. Russian media are purged from the airwaves, while censorship of dissident voices has drastically escalated online with regard to this war. Social media algorithms artificially boost corrupt propaganda outlets, which aggressively push the imperial line. Anti-Russia trolling operations are loudly praised and amplified by corporate media, government agencies, warmongering think tanks funded by Western governments and the war industry, and branches of the U.S. military explicitly dedicated to cyberspace operations, despite all we know about the U.S. and U.K. militaries secretly using trolling operations online. This is a proxy war that simply could not happen if it wasn't backed to the hilt by the most powerful government on Earth. And before anyone objects, yes, this is indisputably a proxy war. If it isn't a proxy war when you're sending billions of dollars of weapons to be used by CIA-trained fighters aided by U.S. military intelligence and U.S. special forces and CIA operatives on the ground, then there has never been a proxy war. 
That's why U.S. officials and the mass media have been openly calling it a proxy war. None of this would be happening if this proxy war was as just and righteous as its proponents are pretending. If your proxy war demands non-stop perception management at maximum aggression to manufacture public consent for it, your proxy war is probably immoral and bad. If maintaining public support for a proxy war requires non-stop PR spin, aggressive propaganda from the mainstream news media, banning of Russian media, and giant troll information ops amplified by think tanks and government agencies, it probably shouldn't have public support. If you need to aggressively psychologically manipulate a population to get them to support your agenda, censor their speech, and disrupt their online discourse with astroturf trolling ops, it's because you know your agenda is not something they'd choose to support on their own. If you need to manipulate people into supporting something, it's because it's not worthy of their support, and you know it. If people really understood how much was being risked in escalating this proxy war, and at what, what extraordinary cost, and at no benefit to the common citizen, Washington would be a steaming pile of rubble right now. Nothing could protect our rulers from the rage of the citizenry if they really understood that their bank accounts are being plundered and their lives risked solely to advance the geostrategic goals of a few corrupt imperialists. They work to manufacture our consent because they know we wouldn't give it to them of our own volition. It's about as despicable a subversion of democracy as you could possibly come up with.